Welcome to the first episode of Common Man Game Reviews. This is going to be a pretty relaxed review series where I just review, you know, games that I missed, uh, games that interest me, whatever it is. Episode 1, Super Metroid, Super Nintendo. This is a game that I missed as a child. A game that I've always known is very popular, but I had just never played it. The Super Nintendo for me was a console that I uh, had around, but you know, it was my older brother's, I couldn't play with it much, so I was kind of relegated to the Nintendo, right? So I did play some Super Nintendo games, but I'm more familiar with uh, NES games. Now, this game in particular is kind of special because the entire Metroid series was really lost on me. Uh, I didn't play, basically name one, and I didn't play it. So it was an awesome opportunity to be able to go back and play a game that so many people feel so passionate about. Uh, basically with no expectations whatsoever. As you can probably tell from my audio, this is going to be a very experimental first episode. I don't know what I like yet, what I don't like. I've got some audio stuff on the way. And honestly, this isn't meant to be the most professionally put together review. More just me talking about the game, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and what I would fix about it. I'm going to be giving a letter grade at the end based on the points that I give in each category. That's kind of subject to change, but I'll put it on the screen right now, kind of what I'm working with, so you can get an idea of, you know, where any individual game stands. For me, a 5 out of 10, or, you know, a 3 out of 5 is like exactly average. It's not like a 5 out of 10 IGN where it's the worst game ever made. Even though this is an old game at this point, I am going to try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. Uh, there may be some things that border on spoiler territory, but all the footage I use is going to be generally from the first half of the game and not going to include any major plot points. Oh, <laughs> sons of bitches. I guess I'm back in. I'm going back in. space colony the first thing i'd like to cover with any game especially an older game is the controls honestly controls can make or break an entire game so i think it's important to put it up front when i'm looking at a retro game review i'm thinking get to the controls get to the controls and here i can tell you that these controls are very responsive they have some retro jank to them. Uh, in the background right now, you're going to see some footage of jumping. And that is important because the jumping here is mostly good. I feel like I, after practice, I miss about 25% of the jumps that I make, regardless of you know getting better and getting better. I, I still feel that I am missing an amount of jumps that could have been avoided by toning down the retro jank a little bit. But it's very, very playable. Uh, and that's really my only gripe with the controls. The uh, shoulder buttons aim you up and down diagonally. And I think that's like a really inspired thing for a for a game of this era to have uh, thought of that sort of thing. 
it's very easy to switch weapons although it's not fast it's not fluid uh, it's easy to do and it's straightforward this is footage from the beginning of the game when I didn't really have the jumps figured out and I didn't really have the exploration factor figured out either so you're gonna see me waffling around trying things shooting walls etc we'll get into that part in the gameplay section but you're seeing me kind of figure it out and if you saw me go through this room with the bats before I kind of took it slow figured it out and then only on the second time I already felt like I could breeze through there and use the controls at my disposal to to make the room relatively easy so it's not the learning curve is there and it's got a little bit of that jank that you might expect from an older game but it's very responsive and I feel like I can make it work pretty easily now you're seeing me fight my first real boss uh, this is kind of right at the very beginning you get thrown thrown in there you don't really know the controls yet I'm kind of figuring things out as you can see I'm not doing an excellent job here but this kind of highlights you know get good or die right and this is very much a get good or die moment you can't hit him in the legs it forces you to use the extra shoot diagonal buttons or just jump and shoot which you're seeing a lot of me doing here but overall I mean as much as it's kind of rough to get put into a boss fight immediately it is a uh, it is a really good tutorial where if you don't do it right you're just dead So as far as controls go, I give it a solid 9 out of 10. If the jumps were just a little bit more controllable, then this would be a 10. They really, for the era that this was made in, they killed it. So now we're on to gameplay, and as far as gameplay is concerned, man does it hold up. I mean, I don't have to tell you this, but Metroidvania games hold up, and this is no exception. I mean, this, it didn't literally start it all, because I, I realized there were Metroid games before it, but I mean, this is pretty much a master class in exploration. The map is excellent. Your sense of direction is... You're not directly told exactly where to go all the time, like some other games. Uh, but you generally know where you've been, where you haven't been. And that's enough, right? Uh, getting power-ups feels awesome. You know, finding that room that has even just an extra set of missiles feels fantastic. You know, getting an extra five missiles doesn't sound like a lot, especially when you end the game with like 120. But I still enjoyed getting every single one of them. There were just a few times where I felt like I was doing a lot of running through rooms I had already been in, which was partially mitigated by the fact that, you know, I had different items and capabilities by that point. But there was just a little bit too much retreading my steps for my liking. Uh, the boss fights are great. You know, I showed the first one. I'm not going to show any more because it would just be, you know, more spoiler territory at that point. Uh, this is a this clips from a little bit later in the game, uh, where you can see, you know, there's power ups, 
there's things that are editing my gameplay experience just making me stronger um, the upgrades just felt really good uh, I give the gameplay an 8 out of 10 just because there was a lot of retreading where they had room on the map to make something else now I'm not saying they should have went you know, play tested it and uh, found every area where you might retrace your steps and replace it with a different hallway that railroads you down that hallway. But, you know, they could have punched it up just a little bit. Uh, and, you know, you can see me get my butt whooped by all the different kinds of enemies in this game. I mean, they're, they're here and they're brutal. And the game is not easy. Game is not easy. But, as I said in the control section, you basically have what you need to play the game. You, you don't feel like the game is holding you back. You feel like you are holding you back. Let's talk about story and sound design together. Because... They're both kind of smaller categories, but the story here is basically non-existent. You get a cutscene at the very beginning, and it pays off right at the very end. So, honestly, if you're expecting a story here, you're not going to really get it. Uh, but I don't think this sort of thing requires a story. This kind of thing is about being in a place where everything's unfamiliar, running around, figuring things out on your own. So I don't take off any points for that. I say it's completely average. I mean, that this is the type of game you don't need a story. As far as the sound design goes, the reason why I'm showing this part of the game in particular, there, there wasn't anything particularly special about this room, but I remember very clearly when I was playing this through on Twitch, shameless plug, uh, I was singing the music here. It is so damn good. I mean... The music in this game is just a master class of composing video game music. Sure, not literally every song in this entire game I would I would jam out to. But I would say the ones I jam out to, and there are several, they just slap so hard. I mean, this is the type of thing where you could take five or six of these tracks and put them on your mixtape. Put them in your tape deck or whatever and just absolutely jam out to them on your car system or whatever. I'm talking four hour drive. These songs are in the rotation. Unbelievable. As far as the other sounds in the game, uh, there was at one point in the game where I heard like a weird fart noise and I don't know if it was a glitch but it was just like in one room maybe it was one enemy that was doing it but uh, it never happened again in the entire game so I'm thinking it was probably a glitch other than that the enemies make satisfying noises the guns make satisfying noises and man did I say the music is great it, it is really the highlight of this whole experience, I think. The gameplay is really good. But that music almost makes me want to play it again. So I'm always going to hit you with a final score with a letter grade. I'm going to give you my time to beat and how I would quote-unquote fix the game. So... The final score is an 8.3 out of 10. That falls an A- minus on my very scientific scale I showed at the very beginning. My time to beat was 9 hours 14 minutes playtime. 
how I would fix the game is I would work on the sensitivity of the jumps. It is it is very close. But it's not exactly perfect. I would punch up some of those sections that I felt like relied on making the player run back through rooms they'd already been in. Sure, some of those rooms sort of changed objective as you got different power-ups and you were going different places, but I felt like they relied on it a little bit, a little bit too much. And I would think about how to make some of the mid-bosses have more impact. Um, maybe tease one of them, or even better yet, uh, have something kind of in the middle of the game that reminds you of the opening cutscene because while I said that the story doesn't really matter here the opening cutscene and the closing minutes of the game are the only two things that seem to uh, really correspond to each other at all so if they had just had a little reminder right in the middle i think it just would have would have really made it pop thank you guys for watching my very first review video it means a lot to me please like at this point i'm pretty sure i've been editing this for like two hours which i know isn't like the longest time i know people edit things for days and days on end but for me, for my very first outing, this video means a lot to me, and it's not even out yet. And I just thank you guys so much for being here, and I thank you for any comments, likes, subscribes, or anything like that. Honestly, any uh, feedback at all. Thank you guys for watching. Common Man. Signing out.